Vancouver Island Music Fest episode 2012 is coming up in a remarkably short period of time and it looks as though interest this year is higher than it has ever been before. So of course we're going to take you to somebody who knows all about what's going on for the Vancouver Island Music Fest. Welcome to FaceTime. Joining me here in the studio, none other than Doug Cox, artistic director, executive producer, chief cook and bottle washer, Vancouver Island Music <laughs> Fest. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the show. Good to be here. Congratulations are due already. This is the 18th year. You've been involved for almost all of those, and you've never sold out all the weekend passes before. No, we never have. And here this year, it was, it was back in May when I think you announced they're all gone. Yes, they are. They're all gone for the first time, so that's pretty exciting. A certain craze sets in when people start to hear that they've all sold out because I think people have been conditioned. Oh yeah, oh, the Music Fest is coming. I better make sure I grab a, I grab a weekend pass. And now that opportunity is, is gone because you've sold them all. Yes, yes, and it, it, a certain craze sure has set in. We've been hearing from people everywhere. Anybody that has anything to do with, with the festival is I've been hearing from people that, that are trying to get tickets, so. So, why this year? You've got a dynamite lineup, there's no question about that, uh, but that's not to say you haven't had great lineups in years gone by. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can only guess why this year, but I think it's, it's the combination of a few things. Um, the first one being just the culmin culmination of 18 years of the festival, the reputation is building and building. Uh, we did a bit of a different marketing strategy this year where we didn't hold back on any names. We've always kind of marketed the festival up until the festival and held back on things, thinking that we would sort of push the excitement level right. as we got closer and closer. And uh, we decided that that might not have been the right approach, so we, this time we just announced things as soon as we could. And the other big one is the, um, the changes in social media marketing are, are extraordinary. I mean, we sold most of our tickets um, through Facebook and through our, through our mailing list. And then we, we did have a lot of support from the local newspaper, the record, and, and things like that as well. But the real huge change was, was how many people are tied into Facebook and, and mailing lists, I think, at this point. On top of that, we were saying a, a hell of a lineup. You've oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's th a good this one. is a, this has for you has to be an uh, an endeavor that stretches for months, where you're trying to put the lineup together. It's not like you just call these people up at the last moment. Uh, take us through the feel for this year, as 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 some of these major acts started to fall into place. Right? Well, it's actually turned into not just a yearly effort now, but it's it's. I mean, I'm already working on some acts for 2014. You know, and it's. For international acts, it takes that long to make it really work, and um, I think the whole music industry in general has really changed that way. You know, even even locally, it used to be that you could tour and book a tour three months out. You know, and it, now most of the places in Canada that you want to play in, you have to book a year to a year and a half in advance. So the festivals are all doing the same thing at this point, and we're we're working just year round on, on this year and the next year and the year after that. There's quite a few acts that we just kind of put a, an offer, in, like a never ending offer into. Emmy Lou Harris is one of them who we've gotten this year and for five or six years I've been just saying, name the time, you know, when she's available and we'll, we'll book her. And uh, this year we finally got her, you know. There's a few acts like that where you just, the, the, the agent just knows that when the time is right and they're touring in your area or they want to come or they're available, that that offer is there. So um, there's lots of that. That must be like a fist pumping moment for Doug Cox when you get the phone call that says you've got Emmy Lou Harris. It is, absolutely. Yeah, it really is. And it really speaks to our, to our festival and our organization and our reputation as well. You know, last year we had um, Albert Lee and Rodney Crowell who were both members of Emmy Lou Harris's band of years ago, they were both in the hot band. Um, and I don't know if that actually had anything to do with us getting her this time or not, but as these musicians come through and see our festival, they go, they go out and they talk about it. And that spreads around like wildfire. And so that's the way a lot of the time that you'll end up getting some of the headliners that we get because it's really, it's really not, I mean, we do have to pay them, but they'll get that pay wherever they go. So they kind of can really pick and choose where they want to play, especially people like Katie Lang and 
Amy Lou, you know. Um, so we have to constantly work on the, the back end of things, which is, says this is a really unique event to come to, and it's, it's real special the way we treat everyone that comes and that kind of thing, too. And that's, that's, I think, how we get them. So in many ways, the Music Fest sells itself, not only in terms of the people you want to be buying those weekend passes, but in terms of the artists who might oh, be Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of performers that, that now come because most of the, the, the performers that will sell tickets for you they usually come the first time and they'll, they'll only do their one thing on the main stage, right? But then they hang out during the day and they see how amazing the collaborations are that happen on the daytime stages. And then they go, hey, I want to do that, you know? So um, some of the greater musicians that we've had at the festival, like Albert Lee, like Jerry Douglas, um, like David Lindley. Like Amos they, Garrett, who comes back. Amos, yeah. They, they all want to come back every year now and they all get in touch every year and say, can we come this year? because of those collaborations, because that's a, that's a uniquely Western Canadian uh, thing that, that the Western Canadian festivals have done, is put together these daytime programming stages where the collaborations happen. And if you go to festivals in the rest of the world, that's, that's not really the case. You know? So that's part of the magic of what we offer for the artists are these chances to come do these things. And those things have led to artists meeting each other at our festival and going off and recording together and touring together. And it's kind of spawned all kinds of other projects that have, that have happened. So uh, it's a bit of a lonely life touring all the time because you don't really meet a lot of your colleagues because you're just on the road every night with whoever you're touring with, right? So these festivals are, are a really great opportunity for the artists as well to actually see their friends and get introduced to other music. Well, and a sign to you that you're, you're putting together interesting combinations if, in fact, they bear fruit and, yeah, and go out I've, onto the I've, road. Yeah, I've been really lucky that way. You know, I, I'm, I'm really proud of my programming that way, and I think uh, a big part of that is because I'm, I'm a musician myself and I work in a lot of collaborations. So I think I have a pretty good sense of what will work, and I'm also a huge music fan, so I kind of know the history of the people I hire, and I think I have a good sense of who they might want to work with that they've never had a chance to cross paths with as well. So I really um, feel like that's my strong point as an artistic director is putting together those kind of collaborations. Now one of the strange things that always puzzles me is I, I go to the Music Fest, I see people from Campbell River all over the place there. But when I'm here in Campbell River, I don't hear that buzz that exists in the Comox Valley, you know, the music fest is coming. It's almost, it, at times it feels almost like a secret. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> are you, you going to be at the music fest this year? Let's, let's put up a clip here. We've got some people from Campbell River talking about the music fest, and then I want to I touch on this again uh, when we come back. Let's, let's have a look at that first, though. We love to go to the Vancouver Island Music Fest, but it's sold out this year and we missed our chance. So if anybody wants to sell tickets, we're looking. To bring people together on a positive note, it's just uh, it's not done enough. And that's, that's a good way to, to do it. Also, it brings artists together. It inspires new people to do new things. Um, yeah, there's, there's a whole list of, it's all positive. That's, and all, I'm all about the positive, so. Well, I went last year for the first time and it was absolutely fabulous. And I thought what was great in addition to the music was the fun everybody was having over the long weekend and we'd camped and stayed there. So it was great. My big regret this year is that I didn't take note when the tickets went on sale. And I would have been paid a lot of money to see Katie Lang. Brings in tourism from out of town. Uh, make, gives you chances to meet other people and see different nationalities, different angles of different music. It's just a whole lot of fun and lots to bring the children and bring the family and have some hot dogs or whatever. It's just a great time. So, all sorts of regrets. Very nice, yeah. <laughs> we should have bought our tickets earlier. Uh, we should mention there are still some, although there might not be for very long, but there are still some individual day passes available, yes. at least at this particular moment. Yeah. They go on sale online only at midnight. The midnight of June 15th, which is actually the, the beginning of that day. People are, some people have been confused about that. So 
and uh, and it's online, so it's www.islandmusicfest.com. That's correct. And, yes, sir. And there's not a lot of those, so you're expecting... No, there's very few of them, actually. Um, we, we're just topping off the number of people that we think can fit comfortably onto the site. So we keep saying there's very limited tickets, and I think um, people see that as a sales ploy, just as a lot of people saw us saying, if you don't get your tickets now, we're going to run out in the next couple of days, and then we did, you know, and... Uh, not a ploy. <laughs> Not a ploy, and, and it's the same with this. There's, there's very few of them, and I, I think we'll, they'll probably be gone quite, quite quickly. So, when we talk about total numbers, what are we looking at for the Comox Valley Exhibition Grounds come July sixth, seventh, and eighth? Um, the total number of people that we will have on site will be somewhere between 9,200 and 9,500, and that's th these are the numbers that we're we're working with, which is why we've limited our weekend passes because. We've always felt it was super important to make sure that it's a good experience for, for everyone who's there. We could have sold easily another 2,000 weekend passes from the looks of things right now, possibly even more, but that would just destroy the, the, the thing for everyone that's there. And, and that's sadly why we had to close it off, you know? Well, logistically um, speaking, that's an awful lot of people to it have is a in lot one of place at one time. Absolutely. And yeah. to hopefully send them all home happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a lot of people, and, and I mean, out of all of those people, we have 1,200 volunteers, and we have um, usually about 350 to 400 musicians, their guests, our sponsors, um, our staff, our board, of course, our audience. So that, that's a total number of people that we feel comfortable with having on site this year. Then after this year, we're going to look at it again and uh, see if we were right or not. We know we're close. but. Our goal isn't to grow this thing in, in terms of numbers. You know, our goal is to, to make this the best festival we can. Adding more people to it isn't going to make it a better experience for anybody. It's just going to make it feel more like a mall, I guess. <laughs> and, and, and you seem to have reached that point where you've got, you've hit that sweet spot. You've got the weekend passes all sold. You're topped up on volunteers too. Yeah, you've, we're done with volunteers. You've got everybody sure. you need in terms of volunteers, and that's a huge uh, army. You, 12 to 1300 people. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, and so you're down to just a few small day passes left here and there. Yeah. But you've reached that pretty much, give or take, that magic number of how many people you want on that site. Yes, we have. And that's very close, just so people know, to what we had last year as well. It's not a huge increase at all. So um, the comfort level shouldn't be pushed very much compared to where we've been in the past. Let's talk about Campbell River. Okay. It's, it's not as though you really need a new marketing campaign because it seems this year's has worked very well. Uh, but it, it is, do you feel there's a way that you, 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 you can break out of this, this us and them, you know, Campbell River, Comox Valley. People in Campbell River seem to think that, well, that's very much a Comox Valley event. You call it the Vancouver Island Music Fest. People come from all over, but it, it, it feels sometimes like, like I said earlier, that it's a secret in, yeah, in Campbell River. Yeah, well, it's interesting. You know, like I used to, um, I used to book a club in the Comox Valley as well, the Edge Pub, back in the days when when that pub was around, and we took the Campbell River audience very seriously because um, I feel like the majority of the blues audience for the North Island comes from Campbell River. More so than the Comox Valley. Yes, I think so. There's a huge following of blues here. Um, you know, there's lots of blues fans in, in the Comox Valley, too, but the, the, the blues audience tends to be in Campbell River. Don't ask me why, but that seems to be the case. And, and I've never really viewed um, our audience between the Comox Valley and Campbell River as being any different from each other. Really, I mean, I don't even view the two places personally as being different, but from a business perspective, um, because we already have three councils to deal with in the Comox Valley, Cumberland, Courtney, Comox, we've spent quite a few years um, trying to convince them that we're not a bunch of hippies out in the field putting on this big party. The Vancouver Island Music Fest is probably the biggest entertainment tourist destination driver in the north end of Vancouver Island at this point. Um, so we, we're business. We're, we're, we're really solid business. You know, they, they say for every one dollar spent on producing a festival, you bring four or five dollars back into the community that that event is held in. The studies have been done by, by federal people and by other festivals across the country. We have a million dollar operating budget with our festival, so we bring somewhere between four to five million dollars 
into the Comox Valley. Um, that kind of information politically is very important and we're, we're trying to convince the valley as we all grow that, that a big part of the future of the economic development of the Comox Valley and of Campbell River should be in development of the arts strictly from a business perspective. So for that reason, we view the valley differently, the people that, that organize the festival because that's, that's where we're based. Bread and butter. It's harder to come up to Campbell River and convince businesses up here that we have that kind of an effect on this area. Um, there certainly must be some spin-off into Campbell River, but it's probably not as huge as the valley. Aside from that though, just people-wise, volunteer-wise, we have, we have huge support from, from Campbell River and we don't take that for granted at all. The same with um, Nanaimo, Powell River, you know, the, all the surrounding areas of, of what the north end of the island is are, are huge supporters. But there is a bit of a weird disconnect there for sure, you know, and I think there always has been. Now we had Franco Noviello from the Daily Shaw in the Comox Valley take a look at somewhat uh, the economic side of things, uh, this year's Music Fest. Uh, let's have a look at that piece if we can. It's just, there's a special feeling about that, about that whole festival. It's just fun. It's family and it's, it always feels safe and it's always interesting and the music is fabulous and I don't know, it's just great. <laughs> the Comox Valley Folk Society is a non-profit organization founded in 1995 with the goal of delivering a Roots and World Music Festival to the Comox Valley every summer. But there just might be more to this festival than you might initially expect. Sue Wood is the marketing manager for Vancouver Island Music Festival. Recent Canadian studies have shown that festivals of the, our size, like the Vancouver Island Music Festival, generate four to five dollars per dollar spent. So if we are a million dollar festival, we potentially generate four to five million dollars in the valley over the period of the festival. That's a signif significant contribution to any economic environment. Doug Cox is the artistic director for Vancouver Island Music Festival. We're recognized internationally as one of the best festivals in the world at this point in time and our contribution economically to the community, both the music community internationally and the local community is significant. Outdoor festivals are always an awful lot of fun and yeah we just want to take in something like that locally this year. So. We used to have a camper which was nice, you'd get there early and set your camper up and then you're set for the whole yeah. festival. Well, but, uh, but otherwise, we love it. And we love Vancouver Island. This lineup um, for a marketing manager is uh, magic. Uh, it's selling itself. So Friday night, uh, two of the headliners that are playing Friday night are Richard Thompson and K.D. Lang. Saturday night, uh, Emmy Lou Harris and the Sheepdogs. Sunday, Lori Anderson and Buffy St. Marie and Matt Anderson. And then one of the things that I'm real excited about this year is Sunday during the day, we, we always have our big gospel concert to kick off the festival. We have a 50-member African choir that's going to be coming and performing. And then following that, Sunday daytime, we have the Be Good Tanya, so be doing their show on the main stage as well. So. It's the first time we've had a headliner really on the main stage during the day, but we've got so many great performers this year that we couldn't fit them all into the nighttime lineup. So for the Be Good Tanya fans out there, they'll be playing Sunday during the day. You'll need to check out the Vancouver Island Music Fest website to get all the details. So we're real close to selling out on weekend passes. Um, our day passes are going to go on sale very soon and, and we're selling a limited number of those. So we couldn't be happier. It's just, it's been a magical year already. In the Comox Valley, for Shaw TV, I'm Franco Noviello. Obviously, things are happening. Uh, you've got things lined up. You do have this dynamite lineup. Uh, was, there a, was there an effort to go out and say, let's find the most iconic run of powerful female performers that we can? Because no, that... I look at KD Lang, I look at Emmy Lou Harris, I look at. Buffy St. Marie, who yeah. is now 71 and still bouncing around on yeah. stage. 
Uh, Lori Anderson, I don't know where you found her, yeah. but I'm glad you did. Yeah, me too. Um, there wasn't actually a conscious effort to do that. It's funny because um, I've programmed the festival for 15 years now, and you just kind of get the cards that fall in your lap every year. So some years it's bluegrass oriented, some years it's blues, some years this year happens to be extraordinary bunch of female performers that were all available. And I used to worry about that a lot um, in the evening programming. I, try, I tried to make it balanced and make sure that we had uh, people from different genres of music and we had, a, we had a mix of male and female performers and age differences and different parts of the world and all that stuff. I still do, but I've also realized that when you do have the years where you have those opportunities, you take them because it doesn't mean you'll ever have them again, you know? And, and uh, some of the programming's a little bit selfish, like Laurie Anderson's always been one of my favorite artists. And um, I'm really, really thrilled that she's doing her first festival with us ever. That's fair. That, to me, that's very cool. You know, you don't think of her as a festival act per se. No, no, you don't. And she's not. She's not a super high energy act. So it is going to be, um, I'm sure, a little interesting for some of the audience. But for the people that know her or that appreciate the kind of multimedia uh, storytelling, weird music stuff that she does, they're gonna they're gonna love it. And know? what night? I know you just mentioned it, but what, when is she appearing? She's appearing on Sunday night. Sunday night, yeah, so opens, the final opens the main stage on Sunday night. The final night, yeah. No small uh, position there. Yeah, so I'm re I'm really excited about that one. I mean, I'm excited about all of them, but but every year I try and program a couple of, of my own favorites. So. Well, you're allowed. <laughs> uh, we should mention on Franco's piece there, we had you saying we're almost sold out on weekend yeah. passes. We are sold out on weekend passes, so those are not available. As we mentioned earlier, a small number of single day passes uh, available starting midnight, June 15th, online only, www.islandmusicfest.com. You've also got, uh, getting Buffy St. Marie could not have been easy. I don't know what her touring schedule is like, but I suspect it's not quite as broad as it might have been She's actually been ago. working. She's actually been working really, really hard over the last couple of years. She has a new band. Well, they've they've been with her for a couple of years of of uh, young native guys, mostly guys that live in Winnipeg. And I saw her with her band somewhere over the last couple of years. I can't even remember where, but I know a couple of the guys in the band. Um, and it's magnificent to see her with a with a First Nations group of people backing her up. I mean, they're a rock band and. And Lots she's out of there. You would never guess how old she is when you when you see her perform. You've also got the Sheepdogs coming, which yeah, I, th I, like, I think I heard you say earlier is one of their only, if not their only, summer da Canadian date. It's their only folk festival in Canada that they're playing. I think it's the only one they've ever played. And we were lucky to get them because we got them just before they won three Juno Awards. I mean, they, they, they were already rising, but in Canada now they're they've risen even further, you know, and they're, they're, they're a cool group of guys. I, I met them briefly in New York um, last January, I think it was. Again, I can't remember. I go to a lot of music conferences, so. Yeah. But um, they're, they're, they're just like these young guys that are so incredibly successful and, and deserving of what they do that it's really nice to see. You know? Touring animals, too. They've just been yeah, all, all been across working. Australia with John Fogarty, and now yeah. they're back East Coast, is it now? I'm not sure, but that's a big, find. You must, yeah. have, you must have ticked something off when you got them uh, lined up for yeah. the festival. Yeah, well they wanted to play one Canadian festival this year. Uh, they were looking to do one for sure. And um, amongst musicians our festival really honestly does have a reputation of being one of the best and it's, it's one of those festivals that most musicians want to come to now because of who else is playing and because of how well they're treated. So it's, uh, we're lucky that way, you know. The harder we work, the luckier we get. <laughs> you make your own luck. One of the th one of the secrets to the music fest, of course, is this army of volunteers, many of whom come back again and again and again. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a piece that we want to run here before we run out of time uh, to look at just some of the volunteers and people behind the scenes from last year's music fest. Let's run that. Is everybody ready for the big crowd? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready. Bring them on. Bring them on. We're ready. Oh, yes, we're, we're ready. We're all ready. We are ready. Symbols. Really 
for that all the rest all across the land tunes for everyone Absolutely, you I'm ready. can oh, yeah, sing I'm ready for the crowd. really can't go wrong things could go horribly wrong with the MCs and uh, the instrument lockup's a little shaky too I noticed Jeez, thanks buddy thanks a lot I think so. Number one. And is that the main stage? Any positions are good. Uh, position. <laughs> All right, come in. We can sit together and watch the show. Oh, in any weather, we'll watch the show here at Vancouver Island Music Fest. Sit together and watch the show. Oh, in any weather, we'll watch the show here at Vancouver Island Music Fest. Here at Vancouver Island Music Fest. Here at Vancouver Island Music Fest. 13, 1,200 volunteers make this thing happen, which is a, a, a phenomenal number of people to it organize. It is. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, you can't do that. You can't do the music fest without them. No. You, you can't organize them without, you must have somewhat of a, a crew that we oversees we have, the crew. Yeah, we have five staff members, which is quite amazing because most festivals our size have 12 to 15 staff members. Um, Marcy, who's our operations manager, Creslin, who's our production manager, Linda, who's our volunteer coordinator, um, and Sue, who's our marketing manager, are our key staff. And, they, and uh, they work harder than I do, probably, on the festival, actually. I, I get all the glory because of, of my job, you know, but, but we have this amazing team of people that, to me, kind of starts with the staff and then moves down, through, and our board of directors as well. Um, and then that moves down through the entire volunteer organization. And part of the magic of what we do is based on the idea that nobody's more important than anyone else once we get on that site. And we treat everyone that way and we don't tolerate abusive situations from any staff or volunteers or performers for that matter. And that, that spreads, you know, as it spreads that goodwill and those kind of feelings spread real fast throughout the organization. So it's uh, it's, uh, that's really what the festival is about, is this community coming together to put on this thing. And I, I, if you asked a lot of the volunteers, they would probably say that's the most important part of the event to them. Um, more important than the music, you know? And, and in a way it is, I mean, it's, it's that magical community celebration that, that carries people throughout the year and, and brings them back all the time. I know I've done it, and it, it feels like you're accomplishing something while yeah. you're, while you're yeah. there and enjoying and drinking in the atmosphere, there is uh, that group accomplishment feeling. Yeah, I mean, I, I just came back from the Kerrville Folk Festival in Texas, and that's an 18-day festival, and there's signs up all over their festival site that says it could always be like this. And um, I wish we could steal that and put it all over Music Fest, but <laughs> that belongs to Kerrville. But we certainly have the same, the same feelings. Indeed. Know? Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but the uh, we have to remember Vancouver Island Music Fest July 6th, 7th, and 8th in the Comox Valley Exhibition Grounds. It's going to be a heck of a show. You have to be just counting, well, counting the days is, is probably Absolutely. probably a bit of an understatement. My guest has been Doug Cox, Artistic Director, Executive Producer of the Vancouver Island Music Fest, has been for years. Uh, of course, we'd like to know what you folks would like to see and hear from. Uh, on FaceTime uh, and also what you think of the show. So please don't forget, you can find us and like us, hopefully, on uh, Facebook at www.facebook.com slash FaceTime for you. That's for the number four. You can email us at face-time at shaw.ca. And so ends FaceTime number 11. I'm Dan McLennan. Thanks for sharing some FaceTime. <laughs>